How are we doing everyone? Hope you're all well. Mr. Boulder here and I'm back today with a cassette update video for you. Uh, picked up some of these tapes back in the summer. Picked up some of them just recently. Only 10 cassettes to show so I'm not going to be taking up too much of your time. We're going to kick off after the usual quick sip of coffee. As per usual I'll go from the lighter side of things to the heavier side of things. So that means we're kicking off with some glam of course. And here is Rat and the Rat EP, which came out 40 years ago in 1983. This is Rat before all the big glossy production jobs and the uh, sort of Bow Hill producing all their stuff. Uh, excellent EP. I love some of the stuff on this. Uh, Sweet Cheater, the opening tune's good. You think you're tough. I love that opening riff. It's really, really good. You Got It is a good upbeat track. Um, Tell the World, one of the first Rat songs I've ever heard that. Back for more, which of course ended up on their debut album. Now a cover of, uh, I think it's Aerosmith's Walking the Dog. Here's the cassette. Uh, very, very basic J card. That's all there is to show. Not a lot to it. So yeah, nice piece to have in the collection. This um, had the vinyl for a long time. I'm not sure if it was ever pressed on CD. Um, if it was, jump in the comment section and let me know. Uh, nice six track EP from Rat there. Love that. Up next, some more Rat, and here's the debut out of the cellar from 1984, which is an absolute beast of a glam metal album. Fantastic stuff. Um, an album with no bad songs on it whatsoever. Here's the Clear Shell. Now, with loads of great tunes on. Again, it's an incredibly basic J card, not a lot to see. So many great tunes on this. Uh, Wanted Man, Back For More, which I just talked about, of course, which is on the EP. Uh, I'm Insane, Scene of the Crime, Round and Round, of course. Um, lack of Communication, great riff in that tune. Uh, the More Than Half, that's a good song as well. Yeah, an absolute classic as far as I'm concerned. Um, a 10 out of 10 album. No bad songs. The album sounds fantastic. Great riffs. Great vocals from Stephen Piercy. Bobby Blotz's drums are also excellent. An absolutely fantastic debut album from Rap. That's Out of the Cellar from 1984. And up next, an album that I think is underrated from these guys. And here's Detonator from 1990. I know a lot of people would say um, Invasion of Your Privacy is uh, much better than this. But I actually prefer this over Invasion of Your Privacy, which is a great album as well. But I really like Detonator and I think it doesn't get enough love. It has to be said. Clear shell for you. Um... J card's a bit more interesting with this one. Loads of lyrics. Pictures of the guys. Um, or a picture of the guys, I should say. Yeah, fantastic album, which is underrated. Um, stuff on this, like the last track, Top Secret. It's one of my favourite rap songs. It's really, really good. Uh, Love and Use a Dirty Job. Great tune. Um, Scratch H is a decent tune. Uh, one Step Away, great ballad. Um, all or Nothing, Can't Wait on Love, another really great glam metal tune. Uh, giving Yourself Away, another fantastic ballad. Uh, great album from Rap from 1990, underrated I think. Uh, I own this on all formats now, so that's excellent stuff. So that's all the stuff from Rap. Uh, up next is another fantastic debut album from a glam band. And here's a Skid Row in their debut from 1989. Uh, an absolutely flawless debut album. Tons and tons of great tunes. No bad songs in it at all. It's a 10 out of 10 album. Clear Shell. Uh, stuff on this like Sweet Little Sister. Such a great tune. Uh, Big Guns. Can't stand the heartache. That opening 1, 2, 3 is just flawless stuff. Uh, 18 in Life. I'm kind of bored of hearing that. But still a good tune. Rattlesnake Shake is a fantastic track. Youth Gone Wild. Everyone knows that tune. Uh, I Remember You. Fantastic ballad. Here I Am. Stuff like that. J card with lyrics on, which uh, with my eyesight at my age, is no chance I'm reading those. Fantastic album though, absolutely love this. Um, like I say, it's a 10 out of 10 album. Sebastian Back, what can you say? Just such an amazing vocalist. He sounds absolutely superb. Excellent vocals, great uh, guitar playing on this as well. Bass playing's great, the drums are great, everything's about it, it's fantastic. And it's so good. I accidentally bought it twice, so if anyone's after a copy of Skid Row's debut album on cassette, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment section, or if you know me on Facebook or Instagram, send me a direct message or send me an email to Mr. Boulder, metal at outlook.com. 
Skid Row's debut album from 1989. An excellent piece of glam metal. The last of the glam ones is an album that I absolutely love, but even the band hates, is Bon Jovi's 7,800 Fahrenheit. Got this for just two quid on eBay. Absolute bargain. Remember getting this way back in the day on cassette when I was a kid. Um, there is the tape. Yeah, the band doesn't even like this album. I don't understand why. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Great stuff from uh, John Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, etc. Again, here is the J card. With the lyrics. There we go. Picture of the guys on the track listing. Uh, yeah, fantastic album. Um, I don't know why the band don't like it. In and Out of Love, first tune is great. Price of Love's brilliant. Only Lonely, good ballad. King of the Mountain, there's a pile of shit. That can get in the bin. Silent Night is a good tune. Tokyo Road, Hardest Part of the Night. Probably my favourite song on the album. Always Run To You is excellent. Uh, to the Fire, that is not that great. That's to be said. Ends with Secret Dreams. Excellent glam metal from uh, John Bon Jovi and the boys. Excellent stuff. Great guitar solo from Richie Sambora, as always. Love the vocals. The band doesn't like it, but I absolutely love it. Bon Jovi, 7,800 Fahrenheit. Excellent stuff. Moving on to something a bit heavier now. And here's a recent reissue of Metallica. This is the $5.98 EP, which came out in 1987. The first release to feature Jason Newstead on the bass. Uh, nice old school clear shell. Uh, so this is great. Uh, great little EP. It's got the weight on it, of course, which is a Killing Joke song. Uh, the Small Hours. I can't remember who did that originally. Helpless, the Diamond Head tune is great. Crash Course in Brain Surgery. Last Caress, Green Hell, which is, of course, uh, a couple of Misfits tracks that they merged together. There's a J card there. Nice little EP from Metallica. Got this on picture disc and black vinyl. Um, this was quite cheap, actually. It was only about nine quid. Um, I watched it on eBay, and literally about 20 minutes later, I had an offer, knocking a couple of quid off the price, I grabbed it immediately. There's Metallica with the $5.98 EP from 1987. Excellent stuff. Up next, an underrated thrash album. Here's Megadeth, and so far, so good, so what, from 1988, which was uh, the first Megadeth album I heard. I actually got this album on cassette back in 1988. Yeah, underrated album. The production is not brilliant, but it's certainly not shit. It's got to be said. Clear Shell. Um, to be honest, the cover of the Sex Pistols, uh, Anakin in the UK, it's not essential, but I can definitely um, still listen to it and enjoy it. It doesn't spoil the album. Great tracks, and it's like the instrumental, Into the Lungs of Hell. Some of the uh, guitar solo in that is just absolutely fantastic stuff. Set the Fall of Wire, good tune. Uh, Mary Jane is the one I would uh, cut from this album, personally. I could listen to it and enjoy it, but I'm not really that bothered about it. Side 2 kicks off a of 502, In My Darkest Hour. That was uh, Dave Mustaine's tribute to Cliff Burton. Uh, brilliant, brilliant song. Best song on the album. Uh, then you've got Liar. Ends with Hook in Mouth. An underrated Megadeth album, I think. Um, kind of gets uh, lost in the shuffle because it's uh, released in between the classics, Peace Cells and Rust in Peace. But for me, so far so good, so what? Well. It's a really good Megadeth album. The first one I ever heard. Um, so, yes, yeah, still love it to this day. Going to go to 1990 next with some groove. And here is Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. This is a recent pickup. I spun this album to death back in 1993 when I first heard it. First Pantera album was Vulgar, so I picked this one up next a year later. I actually used to have this on original vinyl, and I don't know what happened to it. And uh, it goes for quite a bit of money now, so I'm gutted I lost that. Clear shell. Um, as per usual. Lyrics. Pictures of the guys. So this is Pantera when they're coming out of their glam era, of course. Uh, definitely thrashy. There's a lot of Judas Priest in this, especially in Phil Anselmo's vocals. Uh, it's a great album. I really, really like it. Of course, the riffs and the solos are great. The rhythm section of Vinnie Paul and Rex Brown is, as always, phenomenal stuff. Tile Track's an absolute classic. Don't care for Primal Concrete Sledge. Uh, Psycho Holiday and Heresy are good. Domination, last song on side eight, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the first ever breakdown, as far as I'm concerned in that. Just absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, Clash with Reality, Medicine Man. Message in Blood, The Sheep, The Sleep even. 
Yard of Shredding. Fantastic album. A classic in my opinion. Excellent stuff from Pantera. Cowboys from Hell from 1990. Going to move to 1993 next. And uh, the first album I ever heard by this band. And here's Sepultura, Chaos AD. This is a great example of when a band changes their style and gets it right. Which doesn't always happen, of course. But for me, uh, this is a great album. I went back off this for Found the Rise and Beneath the Remains. Which I prefer over this, but I still think this is a great album. Like I said, a band changing their style and getting it right. Uh, Black Cassette. So this was a huge album in 1993. I remember this being everywhere. Uh, it's the J card with all the lyrics. Picture of the guys there. Some nice artwork. I mean, the opening one, two, three on this of um, Refuse to Resist, Territory, uh, and Slave New World is just absolutely fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. There's loads of great tunes on this album, though. Um... Propaganda, last track on side I really like as well. Uh, Nomad's a good tune. Uh, Manifest, The Hunt, Clint's Fish, stuff like that. Changing the style, getting it spot on. A fantastic album. Sepultura's Chaos AD from 1993. It's fantastic stuff. I love that album. Brilliant, brilliant album. And now we're going to finish up with some new wave of British heavy metal. And here's Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind from 1983. Uh, an album that needs no introduction. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, Clear Shell. Yeah, one of the first made albums I heard back in the day. Absolutely love it. There's some big tunes on this album. Uh, it's the Trooper, obviously. Derby of Boots on. Uh, Revelations, I think that's an underrated uh, Maiden song. It's got to be said. Uh, Where Eagles Dare, the opener's great. Uh, Sun is still decent tune. Um, other good tunes. I mean, for me, actually, to tame a land, the last track on this album is absolutely phenomenal. Don't really get talked about a lot. J card with the lyrics, the artwork, and some info on the back there. Great album from the uh, their best era for me. Made in the best era is definitely sort of 1982 to 1988. Um, but I love their whole era. It has to be said. But there we go, Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind from 1983. Really, really happy to get that. And the last one, as you know, I don't really care much for live albums. But Iron Maiden's Live After Death is essential. So here's the double cassette. Yeah, an album that needs absolutely no introduction. I won't get the other tape out because they're exactly the same. It's just the usual sort of clear shells. Yeah, phenomenal live stuff from Maiden. Um, J card here, just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Needs no introduction. The guys were definitely on top of their game when they put this album out live, it has to be said. Uh, Aces High, just a, such a classic tune. Two Minutes to Midnight, The Trooper, Revelations, Fly of Icarus, Rhyme the Ancient Mariner, Power Slave, Number of the Beast, um, Run to the Hills, Running Free. Rough Child, 22 Acacia Avenue, Children of Damned. That's another underrated Iron Maiden song. Just an essential live album from Iron Maiden, Live After Death. Uh, very now to, happy now to have this on all three formats, cassette, LP, and on CD. Excellent stuff. Really, really happy to grab this. Um, a fantastic live album. It's essential to any collection as far as I'm concerned. Maiden Live After Death from 1985. Essential stuff. Right guys, that's it for today. Uh, a nice, short and sweet video for you. As always, get in the comments section. Let me know what you think about these pickups. And if you're after that Skid Row cassette, yeah, leave me a comment and I'll let you know and I'll post it out to you because I don't need two copies, that has to be said. Uh, as always, guys, cheers for watching. It's much appreciated. I should be back with you soon and um, I'll see you then. So until then, cheers, take care and see you later.